I've already mentioned in past reviews that I'm a fan of the Looney Tunes series of cartoons. Yet out of all the different characters, Speedy Gonzales was one that never really interested me. Sure, Sylvester's failing at capturing the quick rodent were humorous, but compared to the antics of Daffy, Bugs, and the rest of the cast, Speedy just kind of felt eh. But being that every cartoon needed a video game in the 90s, we got Los Gatos Bandidos on the SNES. In this game, you play as Speedy as he attempts to release a bunch of his friends that were captured by the bandit cats. This is told to you in a fairly lengthy expose at the start of the game, with plenty of stereotypical Spanish-style music in the background. I guess this was to be expected, though. Once the intro is completed and you press start on the title screen, you are now told how many mice need to be released from their cages in the current stage. To my knowledge, it's not required to free each one, as I typically missed one or two per level, but we'll get to that. Right from the start, one thing came to mind as I began to play Los Gatos Bandidos. Sonic clone! To be honest, this didn't surprise me as Speedy is a perfect stand-in for Sonic. Anywho, Sonic, I mean Speedy, runs full speed through levels, collecting cheeses, kicking enemies, avoiding pits, and looking for mice. This speed is definitely felt in this game, making the SNES processor earn its paycheck. Pick up some speed shoes, and Speedy runs possibly as fast as Sonic's normal running speed, which isn't exactly something we normally saw on the SNES. Although the game is primarily linear, there are times where you choose different paths to go, dependent on factors like speed and awareness. There may be a moment where you fall into a lower pathway with no way to get back up if you didn't know the drop was coming. As you go through multiple playthroughs, you'll start to memorize level layouts and know when to slow down to prepare for an upcoming branch. You will need to explore the levels at least a little bit though, because Speedy's micey friends are occasionally hidden in obscure dead ends. Once a mouse is freed, it will leap for joy, and even better than that, it becomes a checkpoint in case you die. This is a good thing, as dying in this game can happen somewhat frequently if you're not careful. This boils down to Los Gatos Bandidos containing a few flaws not seen in Sonic games. For one, the controls can be a bit laggy. I can't tell you how many times I've pressed the jump button right at the edge of a platform and the leap isn't performed because of that delay. It's only a frame or two, but this is enough to cause problems, especially since some of the jumps that you are required to perform require insane precision. For example, check this area out here. I had thought that this would lead to an optional area with maybe an extra life, which I determined wasn't worth it. But nope. This is a required hazard to navigate to get to the end of the level. Next up, there are platforms that will drop when you touch them. Sonic had them, sure, but you at least had a second or so to react before the platform drops. Either that, or Sonic would remain on the platform, allowing him to jump again. In Los Gatos Bandidos, as soon as Speedy touched these platforms, they will immediately plummet to the ground, giving Speedy literally nanoseconds to react. And if you touch it and it starts to fall, you can't even perform a second jump to clear the obstacle, since Speedy is no longer in contact with the ground to make that jump. Now you have to backtrack a few seconds to get the platforms to spawn in again. Many times these falling platforms only lead to optional stuff like cheese and lives, but there are times, such as the construction level, where you need to keep leaping on dropping beams just to make it to the next part of the stage. Giving us an extra second to react would have been hugely beneficial. Piggybacking off of that problem, you'll also often encounter moving platforms. To make even these difficult to maneuver on, the platforms don't stop or slow down when they get to the ends of their path. This means that you really have to time your movements to hit the platform in stride. Thankfully, to help this at least a little bit, you can look up and down with the D-pad and scroll the screen left and right with the L and R buttons. It's not a perfect solution, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. Just like in Sonic, there aren't a lot of enemies that you'll encounter, but any that you do find can be defeated by utilizing a swift kick. You also have a health bar starting at 3 hearts, but this can be enlarged to 5 by collecting the large hearts. Dying will reset this extension though, so don't get used to it. Speaking of enemies, there are a few bosses, although I've only encountered one of them during my playthrough. 
The one I did run into had a very easy to figure out pattern, but the problem I ran into was the hit detection with striking it. It wasn't until about 5 deaths later that I found that I could only damage it after he jumped into the air. Strange, since there was no indication of him performing any sort of defensive attack when I went to kick him between his leaping around. In a nice change of pace though, to make things a bit easier, any damage you cause to the boss carries over if you die. So if you knock him down to the last bar of life and perish, when you respawn, his life remains at 1. Very cool design decision. And the developers definitely tried to give you a helping hand, as extra lives are pretty prevalent throughout the game. Not only can you find speedy heads throughout the stages to give you a 1-up, but for every 100 pieces of cheese you collect in the stage, you will get an extra life at the conclusion of the level. Because of this, your cheese count does not carry over between levels, but as long as you make even a minimal effort to find cheese, you should get at least one extra life between every stage. I should also add that at the end of the level, if you found every mouse, you get 100,000 points. It does also seem like you get an extra continue this way too, which is huge because the game's difficulty starts to ramp up as you get further into the game. I got to the fourth world, a haunted house, and I just couldn't get past some of the jumps due to the frequent pools of acid and random rolling logs. Adding that continues restart you at the very beginning of the area instead of the stage you are on, and it might discourage you a bit. Oh, and on discouraging features of the game, there is a timer that you have to contend with. You normally have enough time to complete levels, but in the case that you do run out of time, you don't start again at a checkpoint with a refreshed time limit. Nah, you start at the beginning of the level. Add in the fact that any checkpoints you encounter save the time remaining, and this might become a threat if you spent too much time looking for hidden areas. Granted, you are throwing a bone here, in that if you do run out of time, all of the cheese and power-ups are brought back. So if you know what you're doing, you could technically turn this into an opportunity to get a few extra lives coming out ahead of the game. So although it's a bizarre decision to have you start over, it's not the end of the world. As you can probably tell, the graphics of Los Gatos Bandidos are pretty well done, with plenty of color and detail abound. Speedy looks like he came right from the cartoon, although I don't know how I feel about him looking straight at you when you're not moving. I will admit there's not a ton of animation in regards to enemies, but at least they look decent. As for the sounds, um, this is a weak part of the game. The music isn't terrible, as it's all Spanish-themed musical tracks, but it's so soft that you'll barely hear it over the sound effects. And the sound effects? Not the game's best feature. Speedy's Ariba voice clip sounds off somehow, like it's not the actual actor that did the voiceover. Even worse though, I might have found the worst sound effect in the history of gaming. In stage 3, you are in a construction zone and run up to these cats with jackhammers, which will make your ears bleed. Even worse, these guys take 3 hits to defeat, so you're going to have to put up with that brutal sound that they make for a few extra seconds. And in the late part of the level, you encounter 3 of them back to back. This is truly the stuff of hell. This is what they should make terrorists listen to, to make them spill their secrets. I was actually kind of impressed with Speedy Gonzales' Los Gatos Bandidos. It took a few playthroughs to get into, but once I learned to dial back my speed slightly until I knew the levels, I started to have a lot of fun with it. It can't fully compete with the Blue Hedgehog, but it does a pretty good job at being an SNES clone of that legend. It may not be perfect, but give this one a go, you might be surprised. Final score? 5 out of 7. This is the Reaper. Happy fragging.